Okay, so these images that we're presenting are just going to be on rotation. And I'm going to read frequently ask questions because we only have like 10 minutes. Um, so I'll start with the first question. Why is the show called Uncool? Uncool is a way to destroy our own work. By promoting the viewer, by prompting the viewer in a subjective way to negotiate the title in front of the works, it is a way to form our judgment. To attempt to be uncool is always a move towards cool. It may nearly be impossible to consciously use uncool as an approach or sensibility without it being a challenge for deficiencies. Second question: What's with the name switch? The name switch was a move towards ownership, to be held accountable for the works we're making. And because of our interests that deal with two-person collaborative narratives, Watson and Crick, design duos, and co-parenting, our former name duo didn't seem suitable anymore in its anonymity. What is your work even about? Gossip, distancing, surface, framing, supplemental, cultural practices, scripting, network, process, provisionality, world building, transmedia storytelling, community, ensembles, friendship, strategies, faux juvenility, and seduction, like trolling because we seem to not care when we fully do. When can I come to your studio? This is a question that is always a little weird for us because we work project to project and a lot of the creative experimentation happens on our computers before anything even, even gets produced. There are roughly three times a year when there's actually new work in the studio. Because the process is typically housed digitally, because of this, the studio for us, in those maybe six weeks, we are actually in there, is our bonding time, which makes it a quite vulnerable time to invite someone to our space. A moment where we feel eviscerated and raw. And maybe we're awful at receiving critique, because we have wholeheartedly convinced the other that this works. Yes, of course it does. Is it easy being an artist in Baltimore? How do you like it? You would, you would think with the way people frame ease, affordable spaces, non-profit institutions, and variety of grants, that this ease would be true. It is ever more complicated because people have the machine of centrality in other places that could allow them the real sense of innovation to build models of artistic growth and presentation that doesn't feel borrowed. Others have the cultural discourse, hype machine, capital, and urge for the new that seems to make it complicated for artists here to fully live in the opportunity and fulfillment of vision. Yet, in all of this, I love it. This attempt to make a city that seems on the periphery have human resources and cultural viability is important. What's your next project? This question is always a pressure cooker for us. Something about it has this progressive careers assumption tied up in it. That doesn't that don't give us the space to say maybe there won't be won't be anything again. Maybe we're gonna choose life over art. Maybe we actually don't care or want to plan what's next. Moving in secrecy is a kind of antidote to incessant self-promotion. Failures, what about those? We come to think about failures or unresolved shows as spaces for generating new ideas so that in retrospect the thing that once seemed weak becomes amplified in the newer works and filled out by further production in the oeuvre. Failure is just another avenue in which to arrive towards resolve if you use it to your advantage. What about Bordega? Bordega is a website that uses a model to extrapolate scenarios and visuals from systems that seeks to either quantify or qualify the body in the urban sphere. And through levels of role, com role confusion, create a form of security through obscurity. The site is supplemental to the show's non-existence, a consciously chosen mirage based on aspects of HBO's The Wire. The model posits the nature of interchangeability through a set of key roles in any show's canon, the character, the author, the fan, the actor, and works towards dissolving their stability. HBO's The Wire presents a metropolis where bureaucratic institutions and the people they quantify are seeped in codes, hierarchies, and modes of conduct while simultaneously policing each other. The show's creator, David Simon, uses the phrase juking the stats, which refers to the bureaucratic institutions that set up systems and tests only to benefit from their results directly. This phrase, action, implying moral ambiguity, sets a working model for this series. 
The nature of this ambiguity leads us to a model and a set of five central theme terms as modes of operation. Distanciation, the supplemental, cultural practices, processes, procedural, and the self-preservation. Because further proliferation engendered new forms of pre present ideas of propagation, reproduction, mutation, generalization, generational, and moving from a place of origin to a Frankensteinian notion of selfhood. You were constructed from parts, nameless, and then what occurs when you add electricity, technology, forced to socialize, and ask rudimentary, rudimentary questions about being human. How do you guys view the work? We view the work in terms of form. We think about supplemental forms, social forms, and network forms, and they strive towards considering possibility and variation. We sometimes consider this biological analog a Darwinian notion in the interest of the diversity of form. We are against the notion of an artist taking a linear, didactic approach to arriving at the selection of a form and constantly loading ideas into the form that they have established to exhaust. We are attempting to extend the language of the various forms in the world we created. We are allowing a certain set of conditions to evolve the work. We hope that the work is an exercise in process and provisionality that isn't just about an autonomous form, how are you feeling, a mirth feeling.